Yo guys, what's up? It's Julian. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to make music like or similar to Bonobo. So I just want to start and say real quick, this isn't meant to be some super definitive guide on how to make ex music exactly the way Bonobo is making music. But what it is more of is like a guide on how to do some of the techniques and things that I've picked up on listening to his music. I'm a big fan and I've listened to it quite a bit so I have a pretty good understanding. So I'm just going to go over some of the techniques I picked up on and like I said stuff that I've learned by listening to his music. So you've already heard this whole loop in the intro but I think I'm going to start with the drums. And so the drums are kind of complex upon first listen and interesting to hear. But they're not actually that complicated. They sound like this. So what we have is this like swinging kind of house influenced beat that's a little bit slower. We're at 114 BPM, so not quite house tempo, which would be around like 125 to 130 ish, but still, you know, a nice little beat going. Um, and so what I'm gonna start with is I'm just gonna show you the core of the drums because the idea here is you start with, so you start, so like, you start with your steak and then you put the sauce on it, right? You don't want to just, you can't just have, you can't put a steak on a steak and you can't put sauce on sauce. So you want to start with your steak and put your sauce on it. So the core of the drums being the kick, clap, and hi-hat here is like the steak and then this stuff, all this extra percussion and, and ambience and sort of atmosphere on top of it is meant to be like the sauce that makes the steak taste better. So the drums to start off with the core drums are this. Just this hi hat, snare, or er, clap and kick. And so I just have this kick and it's pretty much just like a very analog sounding kind of thump. Like an eight oh eight or six oh six six oh six type kick, excuse me. And there's not a whole lot of guidelines that I can say but what I will say is like, yeah, I hear he uses a lot of these kind of thumpy kicks where it's not as much about like high end or like that, but more about just being like a thump that keeps the beat going underneath the bass and all that stuff. So that's what I have. And you can hear it doesn't have too much low end because we have a pretty low end. We have a pretty subby bass line. So this kick is n not a lot of like super low end. If I pull up the like the EQ8 spectrum. So you can see it's mostly hitting around like here and up. And there's a little bit of stuff there, but it's not clashing with the bass, so we're fine. So that's the key, just like those sort of smaller thumpy kicks. Now for the clap, I have this like live clap sounding one. And if you see, I moved it forward a little bit. And the reason for that is because when you have like a group of people clapping in a room, for example, they don't all just clap on the same beat. They clap like, Everybody is sort of a little bit off. It, it would be impossible for every single person to clap at the exact same time. That's just not humanly possible. So I sort of mimic that in the computer here by putting this little bit here, this little bit here, and then like most of the, the hardest hit goes right on the beat, and then there's a little bit of stuff before and a little bit of stuff after. And yeah, that just helps the sort of more like organic sound because you get this very real sort of human sounding thing. Now for the hi-hat, it's just a simple hi-hat, not a whole lot of guidelines, just any kind of like small like hi-hat should work. But what I've done is I've used this track delay and I've moved it forward a little bit. So you get this kind of like almost triplety feel, like triplets would be like with this tempo. And so this way, we're in between a straight eighth note, which is like this, and a little bit too rigid. By doing this, We got like a nice swing. It makes you bob your head a little bit. And all I did to do that is I just turned on the track delay. So you press this little D icon here and then I moved it forward. And essentially all this track delay is, is the same as moving this forward like that. But it's a little bit easier to edit this way. You can also switch it to samples by the way, which will give you more precise movements by clicking on this milliseconds. But I just keep it on milliseconds usually because I don't need that precise of movements. So that's our steak, like I said. That's like our core drums. That's the meat. Now we're going to put some sauce on it. So the first thing I have for like the extra kind of layers is this vinyl noise. It's very straightforward. I mean, it's been said a million times. You just get a sample of like some noise from a record 
and then put it under your beat. It's very simple. You just do it. And it's been said in, like, every tutorial ever. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I just have that there for atmosphere. And then I'll start going with the percussion. So I have this layer first. I'll play it with the kick so you hear the beat. So what this is, is it some kind of, like, some kind of like keys jingling thing I I found. Let me see if I can if it'll load the original sample. Okay, so this is the original sample. So like I said, just like some keys jingling. And what I did was I pitched it down and I just chopped it up to sort of fit the beat. So now it has more of a rhythm to it. And I just have this like half note sort of loop. There isn't any kind of extra stuff. And that just adds some percussion in the like very, very high end. The thing that you'll see here is that I'm only doing stuff like there's only one for one thing for each sort of frequency range, and there's a lot of space between for other instruments. So like my drums are pretty thick and there's a lot going on, but I don't have so much going on that it takes away from like other instruments that I would want to have. And if I did, I wouldn't have those other instruments. But that's really the key, is you can do a lot of layers, but Make it all work together. Don't just make it all doing the same one thing with a million layers doing it. But yeah, so that's how that works. Um, next thing up is this paper crumpling, which I made in a little bit of an interesting way that is, to be honest with you, a little bit extra in hindsight. So what I did was I took this paper crumpling sample, and it has a really cool texture to it. It's like ASMR type beat or something. But it's got a cool texture to it that I think really works with this kind of feel. So what I did was I put it in this granular synth, the granulator 2. If you don't know what it is, it's just a Max for Live granular synth. It's like made by the guy who created Ableton or something. I'll put it in the description. It's free. And if you have Live 10, I'm pretty sure Max for Live came with it for free. But I already had live Max for Live when I got Live 10, so I don't know. But yeah, so what I did was I put that in there. And then I use the spray knob here. This is the key to all of this, is the spray knob, because what the spray knob does is it makes it so... So when you put, like, your sound in the sample, in the granular synth, it just plays this one loop of this one part. Which doesn't sound very real, or, like, it just sounds like a loop. It doesn't have the organic feel to it. But when I use the spray knob, you'll see what happens is this line starts... It's playing parts from other parts of the sample. And if you listen to it, I'll turn it up. It pretty much is random. Like, you're kind of just getting random stuff each time, which is good because if you were crumpling up a piece of paper, it would never be exactly the same twice, right? So you need to do things in the computer to replicate that. So that's the purpose of that. And that just adds a nice little layer in the middle. I'll play it with the rest of the drums. Um, here we go. It just kind of rides the beat a little bit and just adds a little bit of percussion. And the last percussion layer here is this thing. Which I don't know exactly what this is, but it's some kind of like bowls jingling or like bells or something. I don't know. But I'll show you the original sample. By the way, if you don't know, if you want to find like an original sample, all you got to do is just right click and hit show in browser or show in explorer. It might be show in finder if you're on a Mac. I'm not sure. And it'll just show you the location of that sample if you ever can't find a sample. But yeah, so this was the original of this. So I pitched it down, I believe, yeah, an octave. And then I just have, like, this sort of rhythm. It's just, again, this one's just like a one-bar loop. So these are all very short loops. But... Yeah, it just kind of rides the beat and gives it a little bit of percussion. These three layers are cool because they're a adding, like, extra percussion, but none of them are exactly on the beat, yet they still all work together because I have, like I said, I have the steak and then I put the sauce on top of it. This, These simple main drums, the core drums, sort of anchor everything and allow these to be all over the place within reason. You know, these still have a rhythm to them that you can pick up on, but, yeah, so... After that, I have, I'll talk about the synths. It's really not too much, to be honest with you. I just have this layer first, which is like this long chord. I got it from a sample pack, and it just holds out over the whole thing. It's playing a G minor chord, because the original sample was in G sharp minor or A flat minor. Um, and the song is in a major key, 
It's in D sharp major, or this little loop. So I put this in G minor. So I just pitch it down one semitone to fit the key because G minor is the relative major, a relative minor of D sharp major. So, yeah. And you can hear when I play that with the chords, it just adds like a nice sort of like hanging that one chord hanging over top of everything really helps to sort of almost create more tension in between the notes i feel like and it's nice sonically too because it has like this sort of rolling sound it's just a nice little sound i like i like using stuff like this and to process that i just put a bit warmer on uh just to sort of fatten it up and give it a little bit more high harmonic content and then I added, and then I side-chained it. And that's really that. There's not a whole lot to say about that. Now I have this bass line. And I'll talk about the patch first, and the, the stuff I did, and then the music. So, for the patch, it's just a sine wave. But if you listen, some of those notes are a little bit too low for just a sine wave. So I added this second operator with just a little bit of FM, and it's up an octave from the first one to give a little bit more tonality to those lower notes. So the high harmonics allow you to hear those and feel them a little bit more too. You can kind of like feel the low bass better than you could with uh, just the sine wave. And then after that, I just did one voice and then I set it to glide so you could do, there's like little glides at the beginning here. And after that I have this, uh, I just put a bit warmer on it for a little bit more harmonic content to bring out those low notes more. And then I side chain it to the kick just to keep it, I guess, working with the rest of everything and not like overpowering everything. Now, as far as the sort of programming goes, this pattern just follows the chord progression for the most part. Um, not really too much to say about that otherwise, but what it does do that's pretty interesting is, I, or not pretty interesting, but is like something I want to explain is if you see these eighth notes here are all like off the beat. So I, what I've done is I've just gone through and moved these. If I play this with the kick and I, with the hi-hat. It makes it groove more. It works with that sort of like, or it goes with that sort of a uh, triplet kind of feel that I was talking about earlier where it's like. Almost like Flying Lotus's music and like uh, the whole kind of like LA beat scene or whatever. But yeah, so. Again, that's just like with the percussion, what I was saying is like, it's really just a matter of just getting in and doing it. There's no real guide I can tell you other than to do this, move your notes off beat. You just really have to dive in and try to do it yourself. So that's pretty much that. And I have those little slides there. But yeah, now as far as the main chords go, I have this layer. So this thing I just made with analog, it's actually pretty simple. But it sounds pretty cool to me. So I just am playing the chords, which I'll go over in a second. And the basic analog sounds like this. So all it is, is it's two saw waves, I guess. Yeah, two saw waves and then a little bit of noise. And then I have them low pass filtered with no envelope. And then I set the amp envelope like this. So it just plays the chord and doesn't have any release or attack or anything. Now where this gets its sound from is from automating this volume knob because what I did was I automated it rhythmically. And that's what's giving it that that like kind of thing. And if you see I staggered the volumes here too. Like some of these are smaller and some of them are like all the way up. And that's just to put emphasis on some of the notes. Now I think the groove from this really comes from having it side chained as well as having this because if you listen to it with the side chain on, that's what really brings out those like sixteenth notes like this. How it like jumps for it goes like like it really it really uh helps to emphasize the groove I think. So that side chaining is pretty important to the sound. Now, other than that I have this erosion on there, which is just doing the noise thing and that just adds a little bit of high-end crunch on top as you can hear just to sort of take it and make it less of a synth and more of like a sound if that makes any sense like i feel like that should really be the emphasis here is like not trying to make like synth sounds but trying to just make sounds you know like when you read a review for example 
like if you read like a Pitchfork review or something of Bonobo's music. Like they always describe it as like oh like the the synths twirl through your ears like a perfect I don't know like whatever kind of thing but that's how they always describe it and that's what you need to be thinking of when you make these sounds like you don't want to be thinking about like okay this is a saw wave with a filter on it you want to think about like okay like you want to bring the sounds to life it's like you know when you when you write characters for a story for example you don't just write them as one dimensional you don't just like say okay this is this is Julian. He likes to make music. Like no, like really good characters have a lot of depth to them. They have like a reason why they do things. They have like, you know, a backstory, like all this kind of stuff. And while you can't give your sounds a backstory or like a reason why they do things, you can give them texture and things to give them more depth than just oh that that's a saw wave with the volume automation. So that's kind of the purpose of doing stuff like this erosion here. Which Makes it sound a little bit more just different, I guess. Now, after that, I just have this reverb. Just give it a little bit of width and space and ambience in the mix. Nothing too much to say there. Now, I have this Omnisphere layer, which I'll go over. But what you heard in the intro for the lead is this vocal chop thing. I'll play it with the chords. So I've done no processing on these, aside from pitching some of these, beside and uh, side chaining them. But what I've done is I've taken all these little acapellas from this sample pack company called 91 Vocals. It's a, I used a few of their different packs for this, and this isn't sponsored by them, by the way. I just use some of their sounds, and I think they have pretty good sample packs. But what they make is like vocal sample packs. So like they'll have acapellas and like vocal one shots and stuff. And I just took a bunch of them. And chop them up in this way that fits the uh, fits the key of the song and, and gives it a little bit of rhythm. And I hear Bonobo doing this a lot. And what he's typically using is like, it seems like he's using a lot of like 90s and 2000 R&B acapellas amongst a lot of other things. But like, as far as like um like in the song Kerala for or Kerala or however you say that, I'm pretty sure that main vocal sample was from I think it was Brandy. It was either like Brandy or Monica or Aaliyah. Or like one of those kind of like 90s R&B type of girls. So, yeah, th these vocals just kind of had that feel. And so I've just sort of made that four bar loop with them. And, yeah, I mean, not really too much to say about that. Um, I'll show you what I started with. Oh, I reversed that. Yeah, so like, here, let me unreverse this. So, like, I took stuff like that, and it's just a matter of getting creative with it. You know, you just have to go in and do it. I, I can't really say a whole lot there, but you can check these out more, because, like, this project file, as the title says, is in the description for a free download. So, you can dive in and mess with this yourself. Now, this other Omnisphere layer, you actually didn't hear yet, but it sounds like this. It's just like this melody that fits over the chords. So I'm including this in case anybody wants to mess with it, but I didn't really think this fit, like, the whole thing. But this isn't something that is used a lot by Bonobo. And what it is, is it's like this sort of kalimba sound that I got in Omnisphere. Yeah, it's a kalimba. And essentially... This just is like a very, like, this is like a very sort of world sound, which is something he uses a lot, especially in, like, recent years, um, and especially on his last, like, two albums, was, like, all this kind of stuff, like, a lot of these, like, kalimbas, marimbas, like, steel drums, like, all those kind of sounds, you want to be using a lot. Now, it, this didn't really fit in this mix, but I think this is a pretty good one, so I wanted to include it. And, yeah, just doing, like, melodies and, and chords with them and stuff, you can pretty much just use them wherever they fit, I guess. But I wanted to include something talking about that, so I put this little melody in there. But, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. You know, not a whole lot else to say. I just want to show you, like, it's not really as hard as it may see some, seem sometimes. And a lot of this stuff is actually a lot more straightforward than you would think. So, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Hit the comments, leave a like, subscribe, share the video with your friends if you really enjoyed it. Um... Check out my sample packs on Bandcamp. They're all in the description below. And I will see you again tomorrow. Thank you so much, everybody. Peace.